Hello and welcome to Combat Boots to High Heels. This is Kyla Clapham, your host, and I am using H-E-A-L-S instead of H-E-E-L-S as a play on words for the healing process that I have accomplished through realizing and living who I am on the inside versus how I was born on the outside. As an Army veteran, we face a lot of issues in the world today, not only because of the stigma of being a veteran, but being a transgender veteran is extremely difficult. And we are a very much a small minority within a minority. And during the course of time, we will be interviewing other transgender veterans and moving into other issues that we have within the transgender community, not only with the veterans, but we will have some non-veterans as well. So first and foremost, what I'd like to do is just give a brief definition from the Human Rights Campaign under what transgender is and transgender is an umbrella term for people whose gender identity and or expression is different from cultural expectations based on the sex they were assigned at birth being transgender does not imply any specific sexual orientation therefore transgender people may identify as straight gay lesbian bisexual demisexual asexual anything of that nature now, a lot of people in the transgender community have dysphoria. And the way Merriam-Webster defines dysphoria is a state of feeling very unhappy, uneasy, or dissatisfied. You can even look at dysphoric under their definition which is very unhappy, uneasy, or dissatisfied, marked by character or characterized by dysphoria. A dysphoric mood, a dysphoric person. All right. Now, if we look at gender dysphoria, that is a distressed state arising from conflict between a person's gender identity and the sex the person has or was identified as having at birth. Also, a condition marked by such distress. A lot of this is brought on in today's society by a patriarchal system. Now, with that, we have a lot of issues because we are looked at as third-class humans. If people even look at us as human in that aspect of being transgender, and it doesn't matter how a person identifies, but in the climate that we have today, it does make it difficult for somebody to come out and be accepted for who they are on the inside because of the, to borrow a coined term from a friend of mine, the rapper they were giving at birth. It's not the rapper that makes the person, it's everything inside, their experiences, their life, their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations. And for that, we need to make sure that we continue to go on in life in a mutual beneficial way that can support everybody. In matriarchal societies, transgender people or two-spirited people were considered to have a higher elevation in society because they were able to convene with the higher deities. Within that aspect, when patriarchs started coming in and taking over, and this has been documented by historians, the transgender people or two-spirited people started getting moved down into society because they were misunderstood. When, in the name of Christianity, they went into areas here in our own country 
that saw how the Native Americans were living with their society recognizing the two-spirited people, the transgender male, transgender female, the cis the straight male, straight woman. So they had five gender roles in their society. They would wipe out entire tribes in the name of Christ and Christianity, which is wrong in this person's opinion because it's not the way, if you look at how Christ depicted things, that we were to love one another and treat each other with respect. And not to get on a religious soapbox or anything like that, because that's not what this is about. I want you to understand that if you take what was written in the Bible and what has been discovered in ancient texts and ancient his, studying ancient history, they correlate. And you have to look at everything that was going on at the time in the world in the greater picture. So that brings us to being able to figure out what we need to do and how we need to do things and treat each other. In our political environment, we have not only what's going on with election processes, but it breaks down to even how we treat each other in a court or in dealing with police officers in that nature. And I love the police force. They are a wonderful, great group of people, and I support them entirely. And the ones I have um, come in contact with have treated me exactly like a woman. They have not said anything different. But there are transgender women who have issues that don't transpire with the way they are on the inside and the way they live their life, they are treated differently. And that's not just the transgender women, that's the transgender men as well. But the nice thing for the transgender men is once they start their hormone therapy, within a year, they start getting the facial hair that people associate with males. And that helps them in their transition a little bit easier um, once insurance companies start paying for things that they need. But when you're a male to female transgender person, insurance companies don't always pay for things. So it makes it a little bit more difficult in order to show yourself the way you need to be perceived in society. And a lot of people say, well, you're liberal and everything, but I have news for people. There are conservatives, independents, and liberals in every political category. There is not one political party that is solidly one aspect. Recently, we can look at the state of Utah, which is an extremely Republican state, and they have just put a ban on conversion therapy and made it illegal, which is a wonderful step in the right direction. There are Republicans that are working on laws to help the LGBTQIA community. And in this aspect, they are considered a liberal Republican. Just the same as there are liberal Democrats, there are conservative Democrats. So to say that all conservative people are one political party or all liberal people are one is just insane. And in order to move forward, we have to look at everything that is being said within these shows that it is in general. It is not picking on a specific group or pro anyone. I am just trying to get the word out and trying to get help for people that need help and assistance. I've recently read an article from the that the Fifth Circuit rejects the 
lie of transgender pronouns. Well, it's not a lie. I hate to tell you this, but there is more that has been scientifically proven to being transgender. And I will be bringing that research to forward as well, because I do believe in research and not just what is put in articles. Now, this is a very conservative publication that has publicized this, and it all came about because of a court issue. And they literally put two different articles out, one on January 16, 2020, the other on January 27, 2020. The first one, a little bit more on the liberal side, the second one, more on the conservative side of things. All because an inmate that was transitioning wanted things changed within their record. But the judges have decided that it's immaterial in order to do that in a nutshell. So it's extremely difficult and we will be picking apart things, but I want to make sure that I can give you everything together and not to put out anything that is not substantially backed by research. Now, a little bit more about me. I do have my master's in public health administration, my master's in business administration, and I am working on my PhD in public health. So that is why I want everything to be research-based and to be able to help you understand that the misconceptions of being transgender needs to change because when you have people that are androgynous, they want to be them. If they go by they, them, then we should respect that as a human race. We should respect each other. We should ex respect what people are going through. Everything's not black and white. We are in a world of color. We are not in a world of black and white. And even when we had black and white TV, there was some gray in there. Everything's not cut and dry as we see it. During my PH, during my master's of public health, before I started my PhD, I did my thesis on transgenderism, transgender health care, with advocacy for the transgender community. Now, the word transgenderism, I want to get this out there straight, right to the point. There is no ism part about this. That is a falsity that people started saying instead of the derogatory trainee comment um, that people used earlier on in our society. Being transgender, coexisting in society is all we want. It is time to stop the hate. It is time, which is the worst four-letter word in the English language or in any language that you can translate anything to. We weren't put on this world to hate each other. We are here to learn from each other, to educate each other, to support each other. It takes a community to raise people. It takes a community to care about each other. But it takes a world of people to decide that the past needs to be the past. We need to to learn from our mistakes in the past and move forward and become the proper people that we need to be. To understand what needs to be done and accomplished for the present and the future are what we're going to explore in hopes of enlightenment and educating people to where they understand these issues. They can say, yeah, I may not totally agree, but I could become an ally. And I understand this person's point of view. And I want to make sure that I don't end up with that rudimentary hate in my life to where it's 
going to cause